Hello, my name is Kieran Mills and I'm the Applied Maths teacher in the Academy. And I'm going to teach a number of lessons on projectiles. Now projectiles is question number three on the paper. And it comes in two parts usually. Part A, we're talking about horizontal planes. Horizontal planes is when I'm going to be shooting missiles. And what's a missile? Could be a javelin, could be a tennis ball thrown through the air. Horizontal planes is from level ground. Sometimes it's at the same level. Other times it might be at different levels. Here's an example I'll be doing later where it's at a higher level and it's going to fall down to a lower level. But the important thing is level ground. And then part B, we're talking about inclined planes. Best way to understand inclined planes, we're really talking about firing missiles off hills. So I'm going to today do five lessons on horizontal planes and at the end of this you should be able to do or attempt to do every three part A question from the Leaving Cert from 1996 up to last year which is 2019. Uh, if you get stuck with any of them of course you have all the solutions available to you. So let's start with the basics. You know when we talk about a missile we're not talking about something that's got an engine in it. We're just talking about throwing something, a dead body if you like, like a tennis ball through the air. So here's my point of launch. So I fire my tennis ball and it's given a certain initial velocity u. Now I can break u up into what are called horizontal components. I can break it up into a, a next component called ux and a y component called ui and you know how to find those components. We've done this many times before. If the angle of launch is alpha then ux will be u cos alpha and ui will be u sine alpha. Now what you need to understand is the X and Y components do not affect each other. They're independent of each other. So let's say UX in this particular example was 2 meters per second. Well, all the way across its journey, it maintains that speed, 2 meters per second. So if I take it right here, it's going to the right, at 2 meters per second. If I take this point here, it's going to the right at 2 meters per second. Because there's no acceleration in the x direction. There's going to be no wind blowing behind it to speed it up or friction to slow it down. So therefore, in the x direction, whatever speed it has at the beginning, it continues all the way to the end. You know, another way of saying that is the acceleration in the x direction is zero. So ax in the x direction, zero. However, in the y direction, just like when you throw a tennis ball up into the air, it starts off fast and it gets slower and slower. So due to gravity, due to the acceleration, due to gravity, its speed will change. So let's say I start off with ui, and ui was equal to say 5 meters per second. Well as it goes up and up and up it's going to get slower. And when it gets to its highest point, well right here you're going to get vy is equal to zero. And then when it comes down on the far side it's going to speed up again. So vy is changing all the time because there's an acceleration due to gravity. And you know what that acceleration is, we did this already. That acceleration is called g, 9.8 meters per second squared. We always call it minus g, and minus g is minus 9.8 meters per second squared. Now, let's get into the technique. So here's my technique. I get a missile, could be a tennis ball, could be a javelin. And I launch it here with initial velocity u at an angle of alpha to the horizontal. It goes through the air and it lands. So it lands right here. 
We call that horizontal distance it travels along the ground, we call that OR. OR stands for the range, the horizontal range. Now as I said, the only acceleration we have in its journey is in the Y direction. There's no acceleration in the X direction. So whatever speed it has in the X direction, it maintains throughout the journey. So the acceleration here, and we call it minus g, meters per second squared, or as we know to be minus 9.8 meters per second squared. Now, every time you do one of these questions, same technique. I don't care if we're doing part A questions or part B questions, we apply the same technique all the time. And the technique is this, set up a table. Here's a table for the missile landing. Sometimes it doesn't land, sometimes it might crash into something in the air, but if it lands, here's my table for landing. So, so it lands. Write down ux, ax and sx and do the same for the y direction. Let's fill in the values. Well, ux, as we've already explained, is u cos alpha. ax, there's no acceleration in the x direction, that's zero. And what about sx, the distance it travels? Well, always do this. Always write down the origin as zero, zero. In other words, wherever you launch it from, you make that the origin for convenience. So that's zero, zero. Then write down the coordinates of the point where it lands. Well, it went a distance or to the right, and because it's at the same level, it'll be zero for the y component. So it's or zero. They are the values of Sx and Sy, the distance travel in the x direction and the y direction. So Sx is equal to or, and Sy is equal to zero. And what about these two here? Ui, of course, is u sine alpha. And Ay, that's minus g, or minus 9.8 meters per second squared. Well, I put in g or 9.8, it depends on the problem. If it's a very algebraic problem, then I'll put in G. If it's a numerical kind of problem, I'll put in 9.8. Now, that's the first thing you do in every problem. Draw your diagram and set up your table. Same table for every single question. Now, there are only two equations you're going to use. And you've seen these before when we did uniform accelerated motion. They are s equals ut plus a half at squared, and v is equal to u plus at. So that's kind of nice, isn't it? All you're using all the time are these two equations. So it shouldn't make them too difficult. But it is a little bit tricky. These questions are a little bit tricky because the trigonometry can get quite involved. But don't worry, we'll do the lesson slowly and we'll build up our knowledge slowly. Now, you see these two equations here. I could further divide those two equations. I can apply them separately in the x direction and the y direction. So for example, if I go to this side of the table, I'm going to write down s equals ut plus a half at squared. But I'm going to apply it in the x direction. So I'm going to take the x component of s, the x component of u, and the x component of a. I'm going to put in the axis. What about time? Well, time doesn't have an x or y component. The nice thing about these problems is whatever time you have on this side will be the same as that side. So it shares, both sides share the time. Um, if I was to write down my equation here, it would be s equals ut plus a half at squared. And I apply that in the y direction. The other equation we use is v is equal to u plus at. So vx equals ux plus axt. And over here, vy equals uy plus ayt. 
Actually, those equations on the left will be easier to use for this simple reason. When we're dealing with level ground, horizontal planes, part A questions, then AX is equal to zero. And therefore, if that's zero, this part disappears and that part disappears. It only disappears if you're talking about horizontal planes. So I can get rid of that. I can get rid of that. Of course, that makes a point I made earlier. Vx, which is the final speed, the final speed of the point you're talking about. Here we're talking about landing. Uh, but Vx is equal to Ux throughout. That's the point I made earlier. If Ux is 2 meters per second, any speed afterwards in the x direction is also 2 meters per second. So the initial speed in the x direction is equal to any speed afterwards in the x direction. However, for the y direction, there's an acceleration due to gravity, and that means the speed in the y direction will keep on changing. Now, let's go to an example. Let's go to example one, which is in your notes on page two. Worked example number one. A particle is projected horizontally at 36 meters per second from a point 122.5 meters above a horizontal surface. Find the time taken by the particle to reach the surface. So there's its trajectory and there it is landing. And the horizontal distance traveled in that time. So there's a straightforward problem. Well, look, what do I say? It doesn't matter what problem I'm doing, how complicated it is, hills or on the flat, we adopt that approach, the table. So let me draw a table for this particular problem. So I draw my table, ux, ax, sx, ui, ay, sy. Wherever you start, make that the origin, zero, zero, for convenience. So here's the point of launch, that's zero, zero. Then, using coordinate geometry, write down what the coordinates of this point are. Well, how far did I go out? I actually don't know. It's that distance there. Sometimes we call it the range, but I tend to use the range really for the situation where it's on the same level ground at lunch and it lands on the same level ground. So in this instance, I'll just call it SX which it already is. So I don't know what SX is, so I'll leave it blank. So the coordinates of this point are, I went out SX in the X direction. Signs are crucial. I then went down 122.5. You have to put in minus 122.5. Just like you would do when you do your coordinate geometry. That's important. So Sx, I don't know, Sy minus 122.5. Next, Ux. Well, they fired the particle out horizontally. They didn't fire it up into the air or down towards the ground. It just went out horizontally. So in other words, it just has an X component, Ux. So Ux is 36. No need to do any cos alpha or sine alpha or any of that, that stuff here. It has no component in the y direction, so ui is equal to zero at launch. Now, if you're dealing with part A questions, ax and ay, they're always the same. ax is zero, and ay is minus 9.8 meters per second squared. So, I've done my table. Now, what do I do? Well, look, there's only two equations you can use. S is equal to ut plus a half at squared. But remember, you can divide that into two more, can't you? 
in the x direction and the y direction and v is equal to u plus at. So what's the question they're asking me? They're asking me, find the time taken by the particle to reach the surface. Find the time it takes to land. I suppose I should have specified that, shouldn't I? That's a table where the particle lands. So I want to find that time. Well, have a look at both sides. Well, I'm missing a number there, haven't I? So my inclination is to go to the Y side of the table because I have full information there. Write down your first equation. S equals ut plus a half at squared. And you're going to apply that in the y direction. So sy minus 122.5. Ui, that's zero here. So uit disappears. Don't need it. Plus a half. A1 minus 9.8, T squared, that's what I'm looking for. So I'm going to solve that equation for T. Minus 122.5. I always, I come across a half of 9.8 so often, I know it's 4.9. So it's minus 4.9 T squared. The minuses cancel on both sides. So basically, I'm going to divide by 4.9 here. So it's 122.5 divided by 4.9. That's t squared, isn't it? But I don't want t squared, I want t. So therefore, I will get the square root of both sides. So I'll put that into my calculator. Square root button, fraction button, 122.5 divided by 4.9. And I get a nice answer. The time is 5 seconds. So t is equal to 5 seconds. You know, when I do the problems and I do my table, I don't crowd it with units. But when I write down an answer at the very end, make sure you put the units in. You don't have to do it as you go along because that's a bit of a pain. But when you're finished, got to write down that's five seconds. The other thing they're asking me is find the horizontal distance traveled in that time. The horizontal distance is Sx. So now I'm on this side. So I'm going to use S equals ut plus a half at squared. But remember, Ax is zero. So it's a much simpler little formula, isn't it? It's Sx is equal to Uxt. So on this side, Sx is equal to Uxt. What's Ux? 36. What's the time? 5 seconds. Because remember, whatever time you have on the y side, you can carry into the x side. They share time, which is nice. So 36 by 5, I get 180 meters. Okay, so let's continue on lesson one by doing a couple of leaving cert questions, three part A questions, that aren't too challenging. Uh, the first one I'm going to pick is from leaving cert 2010, three part A. So in a room of height six meters, a ball is projected from a point P. There's point P. There's my room from that blue line to that blue line. There's the height of the room, six meters. Now remember what I always say. I mean, choose four convenience. Your starting point is being the origin. So that point P there is going to be zero, zero. Then look at where we finish. It's going to hit a ceiling at point Q. So when I do my table, we're not talking about landing here, sure we're not? We're talking about going to Q. So the information I'm going to give here is what happens at Q, going from P to Q, not landing. Well, 
The initial speed is 9.8 root 2 meters per second and it's launched at an angle of 45 degrees. Now, can I write in the coordinates of Q? You can see I'm launching it at 1.1 meters above the floor. So what are the coordinates of the ceiling? Well, SX, I go a certain distance to the right, which I don't know, so I'll just call that SX. And what's the distance I go up? And because I'm going up, I'm going to make that positive. So the distance I go up will be 6 meters minus 1.1, that's 4.9 meters. So it's SX 4.9. So I can put that information here. I don't know SX, but I know that SY, the distance in the Y direction, is 4.9 meters. Of course, AX and AY, always the same if we're talking about level ground. 0 and minus 9.8. What about UX and UY? Well, the x component of that, ux, is u cos alpha. So we use cos for the x component. In this particular case, u is 9.8 root 2 by cos alpha, cos 45 degrees. Put that into your calculator and you'll find that cos 45 is actually 1 over root 2. So the root 2's cancel, so I get 9.8 meters per second. If I did UY, it would be U sine alpha. And actually, sine 45 and cos 45 are the same. So you actually get the same answer. So UX is 9.8 meters per second, and UY is 9.8 meters per second. So I filled in my table. Uh, what are they asking? Um, they're asking me to find the length of the straight line PQ. So if I drew a straight line from P to Q, that line there, they want that length. Well, in order to find that length, I'm going to find the sides of a right angle triangle. So here's the base of my right angle triangle, and here's the opposite side of my right angle triangle. So there's the right angle triangle. Now, you know what the base is. That's the distance you go out in the x direction. So that there represents Sx. And you know what the height of that triangle is? It's what I call Sy. So that's 4.9 meters. So I've got Sy. So if I find Sx, that will allow me to use Pythagoras to find that distance PQ. So let's go ahead and start it. Well, look, every problem we do on these, you have to find the time. You really can't do anything without the time. If I look at the right hand side here, I've got full information. So I'm going to apply S equals UT plus a half AT squared. And I'm going to apply that in the y direction. Sy is 4.9, 9.8 times t plus a half of Ay. You know, we know this all the time, don't we? A half of minus 9.8, that's minus 4.9 t squared. What have I got there? I've got a quadratic equation in T. You could actually simplify it. Those numbers look nice, actually. I know when I divide 9.8 by 2, I get 4.9. So I could divide that equation across by 4.9, and I will get 1 is equal to 2T minus T squared. How do you solve the quadratic equation? Bring all the terms to one side, I'll bring them left because I like starting with a plus t squared. So it's t squared minus 2t plus 1 is equal to 0. You're going to factorize it or use the formula. That looks like it can be factorized. So two brackets. Two things that multiply together to give t squared. t by t. 
two numbers that multiply together to give one, one by one, and they have to, the other terms have to add up to minus 2t, so that's going to be minus 1 and minus 1. So look, if you're doing applied maths, you know that, you've done that many times for the junior cert, so I'm not going to start explaining that to you. Put each bracket equal to zero, and t second. There's just one answer. So it takes one second to go from P to Q. Now, as a result of that, I can work out what SX is uh, by applying, using my formula on the left-hand side. So if I apply my formula on the left-hand side, it's SX equals UXT. Remember the half AXT squared? We don't need it because AX is always equal to zero for these part A questions. So SX is UX, which is 9.8 by the time. And remember, both sides share the time. One second on the Y side, that's one second on the X side. So it's multiplied by one, giving me an answer of 9.8 meters. So now I know that SX is 9.8 meters, and I know that SY is equal to 4.9 meters. I want to find the hypotenuse of that triangle. The distance PQ is equal to the square root of SX all squared, 9.8 all squared, plus 4.9 all squared. Put that into your calculator and work it out to one or two decimal places. And check the answer, you've got all the answers at the back of the notes. Let's do one more question to finish off this lesson. I'm going to do Leaving Cert 2001. Again, a three part A question. Same technique, isn't it? So what have I got here? I've got a player, hits a ball with an initial speed of U. We don't know what U is here. From a height one meter, at an angle of 45 degrees to the horizontal ground. A member of the opposing team, 21 meters away, catches the ball at a height of two meters above the ground. You have to find the value of U. A little bit of algebra, Brad involved here. Anyway, it's the same thing, isn't it? Same technique. Where do I start? We call that the origin. Zero, zero. Where do I finish? This is where I finish. What are the coordinates at that point? Well, you're already one meter above the ground, so how far do I go to the right? Plus 21. And then how far do I go up from my point of launch? It's obviously going to be one, isn't it? It's 21, one. They are the coordinates. So when I do my table here, I'm talking about that point there where the ball has been caught. SX is plus 21, SY is 1. AX and AY, always the same. UX, well, UX is U cos 45. So put the cost 45 into your calculator, and when I put it into my calculator, it'll give me this. It'll give me an answer of root 2 on 2. That's cost 45 times u. Ui is actually the same, because you know that cost 45 and sine 45 are the same. If you don't believe me, check it out yourself in your calculator. So I get ux is root 2 on 2 u. And ui is root 2 on 2 u. So, I've got to find the value of u. So, if I look at both sides here, look at the left hand, the x side, I'm missing u, of course, haven't I? Look at the y side, I'm missing u. So, I'm missing u on both sides. So, I've got to make a decision. Which side will I actually start on? Well, you know, if you have a choice, if there's no advantage starting on either side, I'd always start on the X side. And the reason for that is, that reason there, SX is just UXT. 
because AX is equal to zero. So I'm going to start on the left hand side and I get SX is equal to UXT. SX is 21. UX is root 2 on 2. U by T. I'm going to get T in terms of U. So T is equal to, it's going to be 21 by 2 divided by root 2 U. You know, if you wish to put that into your calculator, tidy it up a little bit, and I will guess, when I tidy that up, I will guess 21 root 2 divided by U is equal to the time. So now I have the time in terms of U. I'm now going to bring that into the Y side of the table. And hopefully I'll be able to solve from U at that point. So here's the Y side of the table. So I'm going to write down my equation. S equals UT plus a half AT squared. And I'm going to apply that in the Y direction. And you know they share time. So whatever time I had in the X direction, I can bring that into the Y direction equation. SY is equal to 1. UI, root 2 on 2U. Applied by time, 21 root 2 on U. Plus a half AY. Well, I know that's minus 4.9, don't I? T squared, I'm talking about squaring that. 21 root 2 divided by U, all squared. Now you know a huge part of applied maths is, can I do good algebra, good trigonometry? So that'll test your algebra. Can I solve that for you. I'm not going to do it all for you, I'll just do a little bit of it, but you can finish it off yourself. 1 is equal to root 2 by root 2 is 2, that will cancel, the u's cancel, so I get 21 minus, what will I do with all this stuff here? What have I got? 4.9 by 21 root 2 all squared. I think I'll put that into my calculator and see what happens. So 4.9 by bracket 21 root 2 close bracket squared. I get this fraction, maybe decimalize it. So I get 4,321.8. And um, when you square the U on the bottom, you get u squared. Okay, just do a tiny bit more and then you can finish it off yourself. So jump that entire fraction uh, to the left. So I get 4321.8 divided by u squared is equal to, jump the 1 across, 21 minus 1 is 20. Now you're nearly there. Slide the u squared up and the 20 down. Get the square root of it and check the answer at the back. So, you know, the algebra can be tricky sometimes, so your maths has to be very, very solid, very, very good. Okay, so that's the end of lesson one.